Expand your vocabulary with our core 2,000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Finnish ebook before it's gone. Welcome to FinnishPod101.com's Suomea kolmessa minuutissa. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Finnish. Hey, minun nimeni on Paula. Hauska tutustua. Hi, I'm Paula. Nice to meet you. In this series, we're going to learn basic Finnish expressions. It's super easy and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Finnish. So let's get started. We'll first see how Finnish people introduce themselves in an informal situation. Hey, minun nimeni on Paula. Hauska tutustua. Hi, I'm Paula. Nice to meet you. Hey, minun nimeni on Paula. Hauska tutustua. Let's go through this. Start by saying, hey, minun nimeni on. Then say your name. Hey, minun nimeni on Paula. Finally, say, Hauska tutustua. Hei, minun nimeni on Paula. Hauska tutustua. And now let's see the same sentence in formal speech. Hyvää päivää. Minun nimeni on Paula Laamanen. Hauska tutustua. Good day. My name is Paula Laamanen. Nice to meet you. Hyvää päivää. Minun nimeni on Paula Laamanen. Hauska tutustua. So what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a close look at these together. Hey has been substituted with the formal greeting Hyvää päivää, Finnish for a good day. Minun nimeni on Paula has not been changed. In both cases, minun nimeni on means my name is. However, during a formal self-introduction, we also say our last name, so I said Paula Laamanen. Here you would say your full name. Finally, hauska tutustua is the same for both. This phrase means nice to meet you. One more time. The informal way to introduce yourself in Finnish is Hey, minun nimeni on Paula. Hauska tutustua. You can make it more formal by saying Hyvää päivää. Minun nimeni on Paula Laamanen. Hauska tutustua. Now it's time for Paula's points. When you introduce yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands and use Hauska tutustua after saying your name. If you're concerned about politeness, even hey is polite enough in the Finnish business world. In fact, if you speak too formally, people will think you sound unnatural. In Finland, simple is best. That's it for this lesson. Do you know how we say thank you in Finnish? You'll learn how to say this and many other words in the next Suomea kolmesta minuutissa lesson. Nähdään pian! Hey, minun nimeni on Paula. Hi everybody, I'm Paula. Welcome to FinnishPod101.com's Suomea kolmessa minuutissa. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Finnish. In the last lesson, we learned how to introduce ourselves in Finnish. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to properly thank people. Are you ready? Then let's start. There are several ways to thank someone, but let's start with the easiest. It's just one word. Kiitos. Kiitos. Kiitos means thank you. When saying thank you very much, you just need to add the word paljon. Kiitos paljon. Kiitos paljon. Paljon means a lot. So kiitos paljon is just like saying thank you very much. It doesn't matter if you're trying to be formal or informal. Kiitos will work in both situations, so don't worry. But how do you reply to thank you in Finnish? It's easy. There are basically two ways to do it. The first is ole hyvä. Ole hyvä. Ole hyvä literally means be good, and it's commonly used to reply to thank you, especially when someone thanks you for giving them something. The other way to say you're welcome is the expression ei se mitään. Ei se mitään. 
Literally, this phrase means nothing or never mind. You use this when you think that there's no need to be thanked, so it's like saying don't mention it. So when someone says kiitos to you, you can simply reply with ole hyvä or ei se mitään. Now it's time for Paula's points. If you're not sure about whether to use kiitos or kiitos paljon, keeping it simple is always your safest bet. You don't have to worry about formal or informal situations. Kiitos can be used with just about anyone, anywhere and at any time. Do you know what nakemiin means? In our next Suomea kolmessa minuutissa lesson, you learn this and other greetings in Finnish. Nähdään pian! Hey, minun nimeni on Paula. Hi everybody, I'm Paula. Welcome to FinnishPod101.com's Suomea kolmesta minuutissa. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Finnish. In the last lesson, we learned how to thank people by saying kiitos. In this lesson, we learned some of the most common greetings used in Finland. Ready? Let's get started. The most used informal greeting is hey. Hey. Hey means hi or hello. We use it when we meet people, friends, relatives, and even people we don't know. We used this phrase in lesson one. Do you remember? Do you also remember what the formal way of greeting people is? Hyvää päivää. Hyvää päivää. Literally, hyvää päivää means good day. As a rule of thumb, we can use hyvää päivää only during the daytime, from midday until early evening. During the evening, we say, Hyvää ilta. Hyvää ilta. Ilta is Finnish for evening, so hyvää ilta means good evening. Hyvää päivää and hyvää ilta are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say these greetings again. Instead, when leaving in a formal situation, Finnish people say näkemiin. Näkemiin. Näkemiin means goodbye. In informal situations, you can just say hey hey. Hey, hey. Finally, in Finnish we have an expression meaning see you soon, which can be either formal or informal. Nähdään pian. Nähdään pian. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Finnish. Let's review them all again. When greeting someone in an informal situation, hey. When greeting someone in a formal situation, hyvää päivää or hyvää ilta. When leaving in a formal situation, näkemiin. When leaving in an informal situation, hey hey. When leaving, no matter whether it's a formal or informal situation, nähdään pian. It's easy, right? Now it's time for Paula's points. In formal situations, Finnish people commonly greet each other by shaking hands. But if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we hug each other. Don't be afraid to do it with your Finnish friends. It's normal. In the next lesson, we learn the meaning of the phrase Puhutko Englantia? Do you already know it? I'll tell you all about it in the next Suomea kolmesta minuutista lesson. Nähdään pian! Hey, minun nimeni on Paula. Hi, my name is Paula. Welcome to FinnishPod101.com's Suomea kolmesta minuutissa. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Finnish. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Finnish. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we're going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Finnish, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Here's the informal way to say it. Puhutko sinä englantia? Puhutko sinä englantia? In Finnish, verbs change depending on the pronoun that is used. This verb, puhua, is conjugated to the second person singular, puhut. Ko is a suffix used to make it a question. It is similar to the English word do here. Puhut refers to sinä, which is the informal way to say you. 
and I'm sure you recognize Englandia as English. Puhutko sinä Englandia? To learn how to properly conjugate Finnish verbs like puhua, please look at our Absolute Beginner series on finnishpod101.com. There you'll find several detailed grammar lessons. We're now going to make this sentence formal. First, we need to use the formal version of you, which is te. If we change the word for you, we will conjugate puhua differently. It becomes puhutte. Everything else stays the same. Puhutteko te englantia? Puhutteko te englantia? Adding anteeksi, excuse me, makes the sentence even more polite. Anteeksi, puhutteko te englantia? The responses you will receive could be one of these three. Kyllä. Yes. Kyllä. Vähän. A little. Vähän. Ei, en puhu englantia. No, I don't speak English. Ei. En puhu englantia. Since this last one is a negative statement, we need to say a first, then en before the verb puhu, and englantia after it. Notice also that the verb puhu is slightly different than puhutte. Remember, the verb changes depending on the pronoun used. We are now talking about mina, Finnish for I, so I do not speak is Mina en puhu. The negative verb is also slightly different than the affirmative one. Now it's time for Paula's points. For those of you who speak languages other than English, this question still works. Just substitute Englandia with a different language. Here are some examples. Italia is Italian. Venaya is Russian. Espania is Spanish. And Saksa is German. In this lesson, we mentioned the expression anteeksi. But did you know that this could also be used as an apology? In the next lesson, we will learn this and other ways to apologize in Finnish. I'll see you in our next Suomea kolmesta minuutissa lesson. Nähdään pian! Hey, minun nimeni on Paula. Hi, my name is Paula. Welcome to finnishpod101.com's Suomea kolmessa minuutissa. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Finnish. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase Anteeksi, puhutteko te englantia? Excuse me, do you speak English? We mentioned the word Anteeksi, which means excuse me in Finnish. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use Anteeksi and other words when apologizing in Finnish. We can use anteeksi in formal situations, such as when we are ordering something in bars or restaurants. For example, anteeksi, saisinko kahvin kiitos? Excuse me, could I get a coffee please? We can also use it when asking a question. Anteeksi, missä on tuomiokirkko? Excuse me, where is the dome? Anteeksi is a very flexible word. It can be used in both formal and informal situations. We can use anteeksi when asking a question, trying to get someone's attention, or when apologizing. But if you really want to apologize for something, it might be better to use a different phrase. That phrase is olen pahoillani. It means I am sorry, and can be used both in formal and informal situations. Olen pahoillani. Breaking this down, First, we have the Finnish word for to be, olla. When this is conjugated for minä, meaning I, it is olen. You could say, minä olen pahoillani, but it's common to leave the pronoun itself out. Finally, we have the adjective pahoillani, meaning sorry, olen pahoillani. Now it's time for Paula's points. Please remember that in Finland, if you accidentally bump into someone, it's more common to say anteeksi than olen pahoillani. Are you able to count in Finnish? In the next lesson, we will learn the numbers from 1 to 10. I'll see you in our next Suomea kolmessa minuutissa lesson. Nähdään pian! Hei! 
Minun nimeni on Paula. Hi everybody, I'm Paula. Welcome to FinnishPod101.com's Suomea kolmessa minuutissa. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Finnish. This lesson will be all about numerot. That's right, numbers. First we learn the numbers from 1 to 10. They are not difficult at all and it will only take three minutes. Vain kolme minuuttia. Are you ready? Let's start. Yksi. Yksi. Kaksi. Kaksi. Kolme. Kolme. Neljä. Neljä. Viisi. Viisi. Kuusi. Kuusi. Seitsemän. Seitsemän. Kahdeksan. Kahdeksan. Yhdeksän. Yhdeksän. Kymmenen. Kymmenen. Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Yksi. Kaksi. Kolme. Neljä. Viisi. Kuusi. Seitsemän. Kahdeksan. Yhdeksän. Kymmenen. Great job! If you're wondering what comes before yksi, it is similar to the English words nil or null. It's nolla. Nolla. Easy to remember, right? Now there's no need to panic if your new Finnish friend asks for your cell phone number. Let's practice how you would say it. We'll use the phrase minun numeroni on, which means my number is. Minun numeroni on. Minun numeroni on. Nolla, viisi, nolla, kaksi, yhdeksän, yksi, neljä, seitsemän, kaksi, kahdeksan. Can you read it by yourself? Nolla, viisi, nolla, kaksi, yhdeksän, yksi, neljä, seitsemän, kaksi, kahdeksan. Perfect. Now it's time for Paula's points. Finns love to make words shorter. When counting quickly, the numbers can easily turn to less than half of the length they really are. Y, ka, ko, ne, vi, ku, se, kasi, ysi, kympi. There is no need for you to use these, but now you won't get confused if you start hearing numbers you've never heard before. Do you know the Finnish word for a hundred? It's almost the same as the verb sata, to rain. In the next lesson, we are going to learn the numbers from 11 to 100 in Finnish. Before jumping there, be sure to practice the numbers we learned in this lesson from 1 to 10. Nähdään ensi kerralla! Hey, minun nimeni on Paula. Hi everybody, I'm Paula. Welcome to FinnishPod101.com's Suomea kolmesta minuutissa, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Finnish. In the last lesson, we learned the numbers from 1 to 10. Do you still remember? Let's go through them once more. Yksi, kaksi, kolme, neljä, viisi, kuusi, seitsemän, kahdeksan, yhdeksän, kymmenen. And now let's continue from 11. Yksi toista. Yksi toista. Kaksi toista. Kaksi toista. Kolme toista. Kolme toista. Neljä toista. Neljä toista. Viisi toista. Viisi toista. Kuusi toista. Kuusi toista. Seitsemän toista. Seitsemän toista. Kahdeksan toista. Kahdeksan toista. Yhdeksän toista. Yhdeksän toista. Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Yksi toista. Kaksi toista. Kolme toista. Neljä toista. Viisi toista. Kuusi toista. 
Seitsemäntoista. Kahdeksantoista. Yhdeksäntoista. These numbers might seem long and difficult, but the pattern is actually very simple. Just take any of the numbers you learned in the previous lesson and add toista. Couldn't be much easier, right? For twenty and the other tens, it's just as simple. Take a number and add kymmentä from the word kymmenen, which means ten. Let's go through them. Kaksikymmentä. Kaksi kymmentä. Kolmekymmentä. Kolme kymmentä. Neljäkymmentä. Neljä kymmentä. Viisikymmentä. Viisi kymmentä. Kuusikymmentä. Kuusi kymmentä. Seitsemänkymmentä. Seitsemänkymmentä. Kahdeksankymmentä. Kahdeksankymmentä. Yhdeksänkymmentä. Yhdeksänkymmentä. And lastly, sata. Sata. All these numbers follow the same pattern, so you don't have to worry about irregularities. The only downside is that the numbers tend to get quite long, but once you get the hang of it, it will cause no problem at all. The last thing to learn in this lesson is how to form compound numbers above 20. This is also super easy. Take the tens and simply add the numbers you learned in the previous lesson. Let's try it out. How would you say 38 in Finnish? Let's take it step by step. 30 is 30, and then add 8, 8. 38. It's as simple as that. Let's try another one, like 72. First take 70, 70, and then add 2, 2, to get 72. Now it's time for Paula's points. When you want to count beyond 100, you can use the same basic pattern. Just add the word sata, 100, in front of the tens. For example, 164. 164. Sata kuusi kymmentä neljä. Now you can count in Finnish. Next time when you have trouble sleeping, try counting sheep in Finnish and see how far you can get. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to make practical use of the numbers you have just learned. How would you like to go on a shopping trip in Finland? We'll get to practice the numbers by talking about prices in the next Suomea kolmesta minuutissa lesson. Nähdään pian! Hey, minun nimeni on Paula. Hi everybody, I'm Paula. Welcome to FinnishPod101.com's Suomea kolmesta minuutista. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Finnish. In the last two lessons, we learned how to count in Finnish. Did you memorize the numbers from yksi to sata? I hope so, because this time you will put them to use. We will be practicing shopping in Finland. Before we go, you need to know how to say, how much is this? Kuinka paljon tämä maksaa? Kuinka paljon tämä maksaa? Okay, are you ready to go shopping in Finland? Let's go! Imagine yourself in a shop in Finland. You find something you want to buy and you want to ask how much it costs. Start by saying, anteeksi. Do you remember what that means? Excuse me. Anteeksi, kuinka paljon tämä maksaa? Anteeksi. Kuinka paljon tämä maksaa? The clerk will tell you, se maksaa, it costs, or more simply, se on, it is. For example, se maksaa 25 euroa, or se on 25 euroa. What number is 25? It's 25. So these phrases mean, it costs 25 euros. Let's see some more examples. You see a bag that you want to buy. A bag in Finnish is laukku. So how would you ask how much it costs? Anteeksi, kuinka paljon tämä laukku maksaa? Or a pair of shoes. This makes it slightly different because you have to use the plural form. A shoe would be kenkä, but shoes are kengät in the plural. So you would ask, anteeksi, 
Kuinka paljon nämä kengät maksavat? Also remember that the plural of tämä is nämä, and maksa becomes maksavat when talking about more than one item. Now it's time for Paula's points. Credit and debit cards are very commonly used in Finland, and you can use them in almost all shops and restaurants. If you want to make sure, you can ask, Voinko maksaa kortilla? Can I pay with a card? Voinko maksaa kortilla? Do you feel confident about counting euros and cents in Finnish? If not, don't worry. We will learn all about it next time. I'll be waiting for you in our next Suomea kolmesta minuutissa lesson. Nähdään pian! How are your Finnish listening skills? First you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Poika lukee päiväkirjastaan. Mikä oli ensimmäinen asia, minkä poika teki tänään? Sää oli mahtava tänään. Menin tänä iltapäivänä uimaan altaalle ja menin elokuviin illalla. Minä myös opiskelin koko aamun. Tämä päivä ei ollut huono. Mikä oli ensimmäinen asia, minkä poika teki tänään? Poika lukee päiväkirjastaan. Mikä oli ensimmäinen asia, minkä poika teki tänään? Sää oli mahtava tänään. Menin tänä iltapäivänä uimaan altaalle ja menin elokuviin illalla. Minä myös opiskelin koko aamun. Tämä päivä ei ollut huono. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Finnish listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mies raportoi yrityksensä myyntituloksesta kokouksessa. Mitä kahta taulukkoa hän käyttää presentaatiossaan? Katsokaa monistetta, olkaa hyvä. Vasen taulukko näyttää yrityksemme myynnin viimeisen kolmen vuoden ajalta ja myyntiennusteen kuluvalle vuodelle. Oikea taulukko näyttää kuukausittaisen erittelyn myynneissä tämän vuoden lokakuulle asti. Nyt, katsokaapa vasenta taulukkoa. Se näyttää, että myynnit ovat kasvaneet vakaasti viimeisen kolmen vuoden aikana. Ja jos voimme yhä kasvattaa myyntiämme, tämän vuoden kokonaismyynti tulee osoittamaan kasvua viime vuodesta. Seuraavaksi, katsokaa oikea taulukko. Oikea taulukko näyttää, että kampanjat, jotka ajoimme huhti ja elokuussa, olivat melko tehokkaita. Ymmärrän, mutta myynnit vähenivät touko- ja syyskuussa kampanjoiden jälkeen. Kyllä, mutta tämänkaltainen vaihtelu on väistämätöntä. Odotan tämän vuoden myyntituloksen näyttävän kasvua viime vuodesta, jos voimme jatkaa myyntiemme kasvattamista. Mitä kahta taulukkoa hän käyttää presentaatiossaan? Mies raportoi yrityksensä myyntituloksesta kokouksessa. Mitä kahta taulukkoa hän käyttää presentaatiossaan? Katsokaa monistetta, olkaa hyvä. Vasen taulukko näyttää yrityksemme myynnin viimeisen kolmen vuoden ajalta ja myyntiennusteen kuluvalle vuodelle. Oikea taulukko näyttää kuukausittaisen erittelyn myynneissä tämän vuoden lokakuulle asti. Nyt, katsokaapa vasenta taulukkoa. Se näyttää, 
että myynnit ovat kasvaneet vakaasti viimeisen kolmen vuoden aikana. Ja jos voimme yhä kasvattaa myyntiämme, tämän vuoden kokonaismyynti tulee osoittamaan kasvua viime vuodesta. Seuraavaksi katsokaa oikea taulukko. Oikea taulukko näyttää, että kampanjat, jotka ajoimme huhti ja elokuussa, olivat melko tehokkaita. Ymmärrän, mutta myynnit vähenivät touko- ja syyskuussa kampanjoiden jälkeen. Kyllä, mutta tämänkaltainen vaihtelu on väistämätöntä. Odotan tämän vuoden myyntituloksen näyttävän kasvua viime vuodesta, jos voimme jatkaa myyntiemme kasvattamista. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi everyone, welcome to your monthly review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is the 10 habits of highly effective language learners. So, what do successful language learners, people who set language goals and actually hit them, do differently? And are you doing any of these things already? Let's get into it. You'll discover 10 powerful habits and how to apply them. I'll give you specific step-by-step -step examples. You can use these whether you're learning with our program or any other resource, a textbook, an app, or some audio program. Let's start with the first and most important one. Habit number one, set small, measurable goals with deadlines. Why small goals? Well, say for example, you set big, vague goals, like I wanna be fluent someday, and maybe you buy a textbook, you read the first chapter, then you start wondering if you're getting any better. You start worrying you'll never be fluent, and you give up. If you do this, you need to start setting small, measurable goals. For example, learn 100 words in a month, or speak one minute of conversation, or do 30 of our audio lessons in one month. Deadline, November 30th. Okay, habit number two, create a routine, because your routine is what will bring your goals to reality. This goes back to the first habit. Again, if you set a goal like doing 30 lessons in one month, you need to do one lesson a day and spend 15 minutes studying. Now you have a routine to stick to, one lesson a day, 15 minutes. Next, decide when and where you'll do it. Why? So you can make time. Make a mental note that this time is language time. And, this is important, say no to other things. Your language goals and dreams take first priority. Next, habit number three, don't cram. Instead of cramming or forcing yourself to learn for one or five hours, start small. Cramming may have worked for you with studying for tests, but language learning is a marathon, not a sprint. So if you do five hours now, you'll burn yourself out. You'll hate the learning, and that's not good. That's how you fail at your goals and dreams. But if you can do five to 15 minutes a day, every day, learning won't be overwhelming, and you'll be successful in the long run. So how do you create this habit? If you've set your small, measurable goal and routine, you're good to go. Habit number four, prepare lines and conversations ahead of time. If you're like most language learners, speaking is your weak point. And a lot of the time, it's because you just don't know what to say. You don't have the words in your head. This is where preparation comes in. So imagine you meet a person for the first time. What do you say to each other? Hello, how are you? What's your name? Where are you from? What are your hobbies? If you prepare these questions and answers ahead of time, you then have things to ask and say. So how do you do this? If you're learning on the website, check out our top 25 questions lessons that teach you questions and answers that we use all the time in conversations. For example, what's your name? Where are you from? How old are you? How was your weekend? Another way to prepare is to make a list of questions or phrases you want to say. Then get the translations for those. The point is, if you prepare lines like, my name is, I am from, this weekend I did this, the kind of lines you use all the time, you'll always have something to say. Habit number five, get into the habit of producing output. So input is taking language in, listening and reading, and output is putting language out, so speaking and writing. The point here is, it's easy to just sit and listen and watch YouTube videos. 
You can listen to lessons all day long, but listening helps with listening. It won't get you speaking the language. So the easiest ways to produce output are, for speaking, repeat what you hear out loud. That's called shadowing. And for writing, write things out by hand. You can copy out our lesson dialogues or just copy the sentences out of a textbook. Habit number six, come back and review. And that's because reading something once doesn't mean it'll be in your brain forever. So this is where reviewing comes in. In order to master grammar, words, or phrases, you must go back and review. How do you do this? Spaced repetition flashcards are a great example of this. A lot of language learners use these because with spaced repetition, you get to see words again and again over spaced periods of time, and that improves your memory. Another simple thing you can do is download and save our lessons. Replay them later. Download our dialogue tracks. These give you just the conversation from that lesson, no translations. Make a playlist on your phone and listen as much as possible, just like with songs. Soon, you'll know tons of practical conversations by heart. Next, habit number seven, look for solutions. There's one interesting thing that separates new learners from successful learners. It's how they react when they don't understand something. Because beginners completely rely on the study tools they use, they tend to blame them too. You'll often hear that someone gave up because the textbook was too boring, or it won't help them speak. But if you realize a book won't help you speak, it's not the book's fault, is it? And if you complain that a class doesn't help you speak, but you're not raising your hand at every opportunity either, whose fault is it? So experienced learners look for solutions. Get into the habit of coming up with a solution for your problem. Habit number eight, focus on what you're good at. And you should do this because it's overall motivation. If you're generally better at speaking than writing, then you're more likely to enjoy it, which means you're more likely to continue with it. And that means it's a successful routine. Habit number nine is don't procrastinate, which is easier said than done. Most of us procrastinate. And a lot of that is a result of overthinking. Let's say you plan on studying today. So you remember, ah, I have to study, I have to study. Now you're ruining it in your head. It becomes something you have to do. It's a hassle now. But if you set a small, measurable goal and have a simple routine, spend five minutes, then you know you just need to put in five minutes and you're done. So if you want to beat procrastination, make your goals and routines easy. And number 10, remember that learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. So there's no need to do five hour cram sessions and burn yourself out. Five or 10 minutes is good enough. Remembering this is a good habit to have. If you're having a bad day, if you can't remember some grammar, it's not all over. It's just a minor bump in the road. Another thing that helps is considering the resources you use. Sticking with quick five minute lessons that are easy to finish will help keep you in the marathon. Now, speaking of lessons and resources, Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the Ultimate Guide to Learning and Mastering Language eBook. This is a 52-page eBook that covers the learning tactics I just talked about, setting goals, staying motivated, learning faster. If you're interested in learning strategies, be sure to download it. Next, the Sport and Exercise Conversation Cheat Sheet. If you wanna talk about sports and fitness in the language you're learning, then you'll love this PDF cheat sheet. And finally, how to improve your speaking skills. It's another language strategy lesson. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. All right, because this is the very first episode of the monthly review, we're asking you, yes you, to submit a video of yourself speaking the language. Here's the challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30 second to one minute audio or video clip. Introduce yourself in the language. Share your name, where you're from, and why you're studying this language. And you'll win a three month Premium Plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form, attach the audio or video file, and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode, so a lot of learners will see you and your progress and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about why your worst days are the best days to study. In the meantime, submit your recording if you're brave. 
Like and share this video and leave a comment to tell us what language learning tactics you'd like us to talk about. See you next time. Bye. Want to master grammar so you can speak properly, express yourself better, and understand more? In this video, I'll show you how to master grammar with our lessons and learning program. Let's begin. Number one, listen to the lesson conversations and explanations. In every lesson, you learn a conversation. Then, our teachers break down every word and grammar rule. So you're actually learning grammar rules in the context of conversations, and you can easily see how they're used. Once you're done, review the conversation again and again to remember what you've learned. Number two, read the bonus explanations and tutorials. With the lesson notes, you get extra grammar explanations and examples that are not presented in the lesson. After you're done with the lesson, read the lesson notes for extra review. You can even save them as PDFs so that you can access them anytime. Number three, leave a comment on the lesson. Once you've learned a grammar point, be sure to use it. Leave a comment in the comment section. Write some example sentences for practice. Our teachers will review your comment and give you feedback. Number four, unlock even more grammar lessons. If you want to find all of the grammar lessons available, visit our lesson library. Under category, choose grammar. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons dedicated to helping you learn and master sentence patterns and grammar points. So if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to finally learn Finnish the fast, fun, and easy way? In this video, I'll show you the top 10 ways to get started. So let's begin. Number one, take your very first lesson. Access any audio or video lesson on finnishpod101.com and just press the play button to get started. Don't have an account? Don't worry. Just go to the sign up page to create an account. It takes less than 30 seconds and it's free. We have thousands of audio and video lessons covering a variety of topics like grammar, pronunciation, listening, and reading. Just click on the play button on any lesson and start learning. Number two, read along with the lesson. You can read along with the lesson notes or lesson transcript. These come with every lesson. The lesson notes provide you with the dialogue for the scene taught in the lesson, along with translations, a more in-depth explanation of the grammar and culture, and even vocab and sample sentences. The lesson transcript is the full word-for-word -word transcript of everything you hear in the lesson. And the dialogue study tool provides you with the audio for the lesson dialogue, along with the translations. Number three, shadowing. Shadowing is a tested learning technique where you repeat what you hear. This is a great way to start speaking in minutes and practice speaking in general. If you're listening along with the lesson audio or dialogue, be sure to shadow along the way. Number four, use the dialogue study tool to master the conversation. Here, you get the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation demonstrated in the lesson. Listen and repeat until you've mastered each line. Do this until you've mastered the entire conversation. Number five, use the voice recorder to perfect your pronunciation and speaking. In the dialogue study tool, you'll find a microphone icon next to each line. Click on it to record your voice. Then compare it with the native speakers. Listen and adjust your pronunciation until you match that of the native speaker. Number six, review vocab with the lesson vocabulary list. Vocabulary words are the building blocks of language. You can save vocab words taught in each lesson by clicking on Add to Word Bank. Want to drill the words with smart flashcards instead? Just click on Add to Flashcard Deck to do so. Number seven, listen to the review track. If you've studied an audio lesson before, just listen to the review track so that you don't have to listen through the entire lesson again. This is a great way to reinforce the material that you've learned and it's great to have on the go. Just access any audio lesson and click on the download icon. Then click review to download the review track. Number eight, review with quizzes after the lesson. Once you're confident enough with the material taught in the lesson, be sure to take the quiz to test your newfound knowledge. 
take the review questions and answer true or false for each one. Or take the writing questions and input your answer. Remember to check the answers by clicking on the Check Answers button. Number nine, participate and leave a comment. The best way to master what you've learned is to use it. Join the community of learners by leaving a comment below at the end of every lesson. Our dedicated teachers will check your responses to correct you on any mistakes or provide you with helpful study tips and advice. And finally, number 10, move on to the next lesson. Done with a lesson? Mark the lesson as complete. You can see your overall learning progress on your dashboard. If you particularly enjoyed the lesson, mark the lesson as favorite so that you can come back to it later at any time. Click on the forward arrow to move on to the next lesson and continue learning. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn Finnish, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. Remember, you can sign up to FinnishPod101.com by clicking on the link in the description. Sign up takes less than 30 seconds, and it's free. I'll see you next time. Bye! If you're tired of knowing and speaking the language at a basic level and want to express yourself fluently just like native speakers, then you'll need to learn grammar. The problem? It can be tricky to learn. But don't worry, in this guide you'll discover how to learn and master grammar with the Grammar Bank. 1. Where to get all of the grammar explanations you'll ever need. 2. The best way to learn grammar that's right for your level. And three, how to expose yourself to real examples until the rules become natural to you with a study tool called the Grammar Bank inside of our learning program. But first, if you don't yet have access to our program, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description. First, what is the Grammar Bank? The Grammar Bank is like a grammar dictionary, except online. It's a database of the must-know grammar rules and explanations that makes it easy to look up specific rules and learn them. Look for it in the top menu of our site. Two, how do you learn grammar with it? The best way to learn grammar is not to just study rules, but to learn in context and hear the grammar used in real life. And that's exactly how you learn with our lessons. You learn a quick conversation and hear how the grammar rules are used within that conversation. Three, what if you come across grammar that you're not familiar with? Or what if you want to review a specific rule without going back to redo a lesson? That's where the Grammar Bank comes in. You can look up grammar rules and get the explanations, examples, and links to lessons where we cover these rules. You can also sort grammar by learning level. So if you're an absolute beginner and want to make sure you know all of the absolute beginner grammar rules, you can do just that with the Grammar Bank. You can also sort the rules by spelling, category, and lesson series. And if you want to get used to the grammar patterns so that you can use them in conversation and become fluent, the best way is to expose yourself to examples as much as possible. Grammar is hard at first, but gets easy once you get used to it with enough exposure. Be sure to access the related lessons inside the grammar bank and listen to the native conversations that use the rule as much as possible. So, if you want to become fluent and speak perfectly, you'll need grammar. Take advantage of the Grammar Bank inside of our learning program. But if you don't yet have access, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to sign up. Are you feeling confident as a beginner level language learner? Are you ready to move up to the intermediate level? Here are some tips to help you make that leap and advance your language learning progress. Tip number one, determine your skill level. It's important to look across your skills in the major language competencies, listening, speaking, writing, and reading. By taking our level assessment test, you can review your skills in each competency and see your strengths and weaknesses. Keep in mind it's normal to be better in some skills than others. Premium Plus users can take our level assessment test and get personalized recommendations and learning pathways based on your results. Once you've figured out which skills need work, it's time to take action. No matter which of your language skills need to be improved, make sure you choose a method that's both effective and fun to help maintain your regular learning routine. Tip number two, listening. 
The most effective way to build your listening comprehension is by building a strong vocabulary. The more vocab you master, the easier it will be to understand the context and details of the conversation. Songs in the target language are a key listening tool that will teach you common, everyday vocabulary. By learning and memorizing the lyrics, you're building up your vocabulary. If you really want your listening skills to take off, listen to our podcasts. We have hundreds of hours of audio lessons for you to listen to. Before you know it, you'll be able to understand shows and movies. Tip number three, speaking. Add speaking elements to your language routine. Try shadowing podcasts, repeating along while you listen. Match the native speaker's pronunciation and intonation. This is a fantastic way to improve your fluency and accuracy. You can also find a partner for conversation exchange. A partner can help correct your mistakes and teach you more natural ways to phrase your ideas. Tip number four, writing. An easy way to start writing more often is by keeping a one sentence journal. Write one sentence in a journal every day. It doesn't take a lot of time and is a great habit for beginners to build a routine. You have to be consistent to make improvements. Ask native speakers to correct your writing to improve even faster. You can submit sentences and phrases to your teacher using Premium Plus. Tip number five, reading. Reading is a skill you can improve by yourself. There's no need to rush. It doesn't matter if you read one or 100 pages at a time. What matters is that you understand what you read. Write down new words as you read them to practice later. If there's an audio version, read along with the narrator. It'll help you read at a slightly faster speed than normal. You can use the audio that comes with each of our lessons. Bonus tip, never give up. Where do your language skills currently stand? Where do you want them to be? How do you get there? Whatever your goal is, make it clear and part of your life. You'll reach it if you stay focused and positive. And if you really want your skills to take off, make use of our tools and resources. They're designed to help you get to the next level in the fastest, easiest, and most fun way. Just click the link in the description to sign up for a free lifetime account. Sign up takes less than 30 seconds. Click the link in the description and start learning right away. I'll see you there. Bye. Can you really learn a new language all alone? Learning a language without traditional classroom instruction may seem quite daunting at first. What if you run into questions? How do you stay on track and motivated to achieve your goals? Don't worry. Not only is it possible to learn any language without traditional classroom instruction, we have created an advanced and extensive online language learning system to help you do just that. It's designed to help you learn a language on your own and is faster, more convenient, and less expensive than traditional classroom options. Here are three reasons to learn a language alone. Number one, learn at your own pace and on your own schedule. In today's fast-paced world, there isn't always time for traditional classroom instruction. But when you learn alone, you can study anywhere and any time that suits your schedule best. It makes it far easier to actually reach your goal of learning and mastering the language. Number two, learning a language on your own can reduce stress and anxiety. In traditional classroom settings, there are pop quizzes, tests, and presentations in front of classmates. While it's valuable to learn public speaking skills and to be able to perform under pressure, for some people, these classroom pressures are a big hurdle for their language learning dreams. Learning alone, however, removes these stressors. Learning outside of a traditional classroom setting can help reduce some of the stress you may feel, and you can work towards your goals all on your own. Number three, learning alone can help improve cognitive function. While classroom settings often require learners to spend lots of time memorizing information and following instructions, Studying a language on your own requires you to problem solve so that you can self-teach and hit your goals. You'll also need to be strict with yourself and stick to a regular study schedule. So yes, in some ways, learning a language on your own can be more challenging than learning in a traditional classroom setting. But teaching yourself a language pays dividends throughout life. In addition to learning a language, you'll also learn time management and problem solving skills. These are skills that will aid you when social and professional opportunities arise. So, how do you actually learn a language on your own? Number one, access our huge collection of audio and video lessons. 
Ideally, you want audio and or video lessons that teach vocabulary, grammar, and provide actual conversations and dialogue in your target language to help you with real pronunciation. We have hundreds of hours of HD audio and video lessons on our website, created by professional teachers and actors to help you achieve perfect pronunciation. Plus, all lessons can be accessed 24-7 via any device with internet access. Number two, learning paths with courses based upon your exact needs and goals. Simply tell us your goals and we will identify the best courses and study plan to help you reach them in the shortest time possible. Even though you are technically learning a language on your own, our team is always here to help and make sure you reach your goals fast. Number three, use advanced learning tools. When you have the right tools and learning resources, it's actually easy to teach yourself a language. Over the last 10 years, we've developed, tested, and refined more than 20 advanced learning tools. These tools aim to boost retention and reduce learning time. Eliminate stress and start learning at your own pace, in bed, your car, or wherever you have a few spare minutes. Our learning resources and tools are designed to help you get to the next level in the fastest, easiest, and most fun way. Just click the link in the description to sign up for a free lifetime account. So if you want to learn language anytime, anywhere, sign up for a free lifetime account by clicking the link in the description. Sign up takes less than 30 seconds. Click the link in the description and start learning right away. I'll see you there. Bye. Want to master grammar so you can speak properly, express yourself better, and understand more? In this video, I'll show you how to master grammar with our lessons and learning program. Let's begin. Number one, listen to the lesson conversations and explanations. In every lesson, you learn a conversation. Then, our teachers break down every word and grammar rule. So you're actually learning grammar rules in the context of conversations, and you can easily see how they're used. Once you're done, review the conversation again and again to remember what you've learned. Number two, read the bonus explanations and tutorials. With the lesson notes, you get extra grammar explanations and examples that are not presented in the lesson. After you're done with the lesson, read the lesson notes for extra review. You can even save them as PDFs so that you can access them anytime. Number three, leave a comment on the lesson. Once you've learned a grammar point, be sure to use it. Leave a comment in the comment section. Write some example sentences for practice. Our teachers will review your comment and give you feedback. Number four, unlock even more grammar lessons. If you want to find all of the grammar lessons available, visit our lesson library. Under category, choose grammar. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons dedicated to helping you learn and master sentence patterns and grammar points. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Have you always wanted to learn a new language? You probably have your own reason for wanting to learn, but there are huge benefits to being bilingual that you might not know about. In this video, I'll introduce a few of them. Here are some reasons why you should learn a new language. Number one, you become smarter. Studies show that learning a new language improves your focus and memory. It improves your decision-making, you score higher on intelligence tests, and you're less likely to be swayed by propaganda. Number two, you make more friends. Because you get to communicate with more people, you can meet more people and make more friends. This will help you get more opportunities, like jobs. Number three, find love. The more people you meet, the more opportunities you have of finding that special someone. Number four, you can travel with ease. Simply because you can express yourself confidently in another language. Catching a cab, ordering food, and getting around will never be a problem. Number five, you're more open-minded and feel more empathy. Because a new language puts you in another culture's shoes. When you can speak in another language, you see the world the way that the native speakers do. In fact, when some bilinguals switch from one language to another, they also switch personalities and express themselves differently. For example, 
People tend to feel more direct and assertive when speaking English, and more polite when speaking Japanese. So this allows you to understand others' worldviews and connect with people on a deeper level. Number six, you delay the mental effects of aging by four or five years. Learning and mastering another language sharpens your brain and increases the amount of gray matter, which helps delay dementia. So if you're ready to finally learn and master a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! When learning a new language, we sometimes have a hard time with things like procrastination, discouragement, or failure. But don't panic. With a good strategy, you'll be able to overcome these difficulties. Are you ready to discover the four habits of successful learners? Number one, optimize your time. When learning a language, it's important to dedicate time to your studies regularly, even if sometimes it's difficult. You're busy with school, work, family, or friends but you can spread out your learning throughout the day. Study whenever you have small gaps of time in your busy schedule. This can be when you're on the metro, on your lunch break, or while you're exercising. Our podcast learning format fits perfectly into your tight schedule. Number two, consistency with your chosen method. There are a lot of options when it comes to courses and learning materials. Switching from one method to another can confuse you and disrupt your progress. Focusing on one learning method will make a difference. Our method has been created and optimized by real teachers, so you can stick to it with confidence. Number three, use your language background. Many languages share some commonalities. You can find words that look or sound similar, or even share the same grammar structure. A little bit of language background will give you an edge while learning. Number four, study continuously. People are excited when they start learning a new language. The enthusiasm usually lasts until the first roadblock. This can lead to discouragement and procrastination. But don't burn yourself out. Learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Don't try to learn it all at once. Break things down into more digestible chunks. Learning step-by-step step might feel slow, but it's an efficient way to learn a language. With patience, motivation, and good resources, you'll master the language. Remember, you can't learn a language overnight. But with motivation and these daily lessons, you'll be on the road to fluency. Give it a try now. Sign up for your account. Just click the link in the description. If you're learning a new language, there will be times when you'll struggle with the lesson, when you won't fully understand what you've learned, when you'll be in a rut, or when you just won't feel like you're making any progress. And that's totally normal. In this video, you'll learn what to do if you're not learning and how to overcome language learning struggles. Let's begin. Number one, understand the mindset of a successful learner. Some learners are more successful than others. A key difference between successful learners and less successful learners is in the way they approach problems. Some learners rely completely on a learning program. If there's a grammar rule or word they don't understand, they get frustrated and blame the program. They don't look for solutions. Successful learners approach problems a little differently. If they encounter a problem, they look for a solution or ask for help instead of getting frustrated. You may feel frustrated at times, especially if you're a beginner, but how you choose to react will make all the difference. Number two, set small, measurable, realistic goals with a deadline. Most learners fail because they set big, vague goals, like, I wanna be fluent. When they realize they have no idea how to do that, they lose motivation and quit. The solution to this? Set small, measurable, realistic goals with a deadline. For example, finish 10 audio lessons by the end of this week. Learn 20 words by the end of this week. Speak one minute of conversation by the end of this month. Listen to lessons for just five minutes a day, every day this month. Now your goals are small and realistic enough to accomplish. They're specific and measurable, so you know when you reach them, and the deadline gives you a finish line. For example, either you learned all 20 words by Friday or you didn't. When you reach your goal, you gain a ton of confidence. This improves your chances of reaching your next goal because you've had experience reaching a goal and you understand the things you need to do to be successful. Number three, read along with the lesson notes and lesson transcripts. 
Now, what if you're doing a lesson, but you can't catch a word? Take advantage of the lesson notes and lesson transcripts and read along with the lesson. The lesson notes give you in-depth grammar and vocabulary explanations that are not available in the lesson. And the lesson notes give you the word-for-word -word transcript of everything said in the lesson. So if you want to pick up every word, read the transcript. Number four, review, because repetition is the mother of all learning. If you're struggling with a particular word, grammar rule, or lesson, be sure to repeat and review it a few times. And then come back a few days later and review it again. This same principle is used in our spaced repetition flashcards. The system quizzes you on words, then re-quizzes you in three days, then in six days, and so on, until the word gets embedded in your long-term memory. Some things you can do right now are, download the lesson and lesson notes, save the words to your word bank, or even write down the words or grammar rules, then come back to review them later. Number five, reach out to our teachers and ask questions. If you're a Premium Plus member, you can easily get in touch with your teacher and get all of your points of confusion cleared up. Or you can always leave a comment on our lessons and our teachers will get back to you. Remember, you're not alone. If you're struggling with a lesson, you can always get in touch with us. Number six, take a break and go do something else. Another thing you can do is take a break and do something else that doesn't require much thinking. There's a reason our best ideas come while in the shower or while taking a walk. While you're on a break, your brain is more relaxed and starts making connections that you couldn't see when you were focused and stressed out. It's also why coming back to review things with a fresh mind can help you better understand the lessons you've taken. Number seven, downgrade your learning routine. If you're studying for 30 minutes a day and find yourself overwhelmed, or if you suddenly find yourself busy, the best thing to do is to reduce your study routine to something easier and more manageable. If you've been learning 30 minutes a day, drop down to 10 or 15 minutes. Even five minutes is good enough because language learning success comes with consistency. Quitting and coming back every three months won't work. This brings us to our next point. Number eight, remember, learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Think about it. You can't cram for five hours and expect to remember everything you've studied. So just like with a marathon, it's okay to go slow and at your own pace, even if you're learning for just five minutes a day. Similarly, if you're having trouble understanding a grammar point or a lesson, don't let it bring you down. Learning a language is a marathon, a long-term game, the little points of confusion you have now are just small obstacles and you'll fully understand them with time. So if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Finnish ebook before it's gone.